Hey there, Touch Designer Programmers, Matthew here. So getting ready for the Touch Designer Summit, there are lots of exciting things that we are going to talk about in our workshop on large systems and how to wrangle them. And one of the edge case considerations around that particular idea is how we manage starting up applications, especially an application like Touch Designer, how we configure it. Um, and how we can kind of take advantage of a few things that are built into the way that operating systems run and, and a few other pieces that we can take advantage of. Now in the course, in the workshop, we're actually going to take a look at how to do that configuration with a SIP or JSON file, but equally valuable is taking a look at how we can actually leverage things like environment variables to do some of that work for us. And in fact, if you're working with multiple GPUs, uh, something like environment variables become a really powerful and almost imperative tool to take advantage of uh, depending on how you are going about part of your process. So to dig in here, our objective is going to be to see how we can take advantage of environment variables, how we can capture them here inside of Touch Designer, and how we might be able to use those to drive some part of what we're up to. Okay, so to get started, I'm actually just going to go ahead and create a new folder called auto start here on my desktop Aruski and I'm going to save my project file right in there so you know just the usual stuff to get started here I want to go ahead and dump this in auto start I'm going to call this auto start toe all right I'm going to do a little bit of the usual I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all this stuff in here I'm going to create a text top to get us started. And then I'm going to plug this right into a null. I'm going to set this to match my parents' panel size. And I'm just going to turn up the size of that a little bit in terms of our font, just so we can see what we're up to. That's a little too big for me. Bada bing, bada boom. Last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and make sure this container is pointed to dot slash null one excellent and I'm going to resize it because I like all my nodes to have the same size all right I'm going to shift home to land right on the home of this thing control save one more time and now I'm going to quit this particular project and let's fire it up again to make sure that it's actually going to start now we're going to take a look at first how to uh, use windows and a batch script to get this uh, File this tow file to start for us automatically. Um, and then we're going to take a look at how we can do a few other exciting things. So be patient as we dig through here. Okay, so far this is working just the way that I want it to. Now I'm going to go ahead and come back over here to our folder. I'm going to open this up uh, with VS Code. That's my text editor of choice these days. I was loving on Sublime an awful lot, but VS Code has really stolen my heart in a lot of ways of a number of conveniences that it has handy here for us. I'm going to go ahead and kill this welcome screen and I'm going to create a new file. Now I'm going to call this my uh, startup.cmd. That's our uh, file extension that we use here in Windows uh, for command prompt or a shell script that we want to actually author. I'm not going to write this uh, today in something like um, PowerShell, and so we're just going to look at it like a CMD file. But you can certainly leverage a number of different tools to take advantage of some of these same ideas. Now, to get started here, the very first thing I want to be able to do is I want to actually run this file and have it start up Touch Designer for me. Now, why on earth would I want that? Well, good uh, use cases for this would be, let's say you've got an installation that you want to have start up. Uh, when the computer starts up, right? You could put this particular batch file or shortcut to this batch file in your startup procedure. And then when the machine starts, this project starts, you might want to package up a shortcut that gives your client something that they double click on and that launches the project, you name it. You might, if you're doing a set, you might want to have some configuration. And rather than going through a complicated set of procedures, you just want to double click on a file and it launches your uh, tow file or your series of tow files that you're going to be using for a set or for uh, you name it. Any particular kind of constellation of creative uses that you might come up with. Okay, so to get started, 
what do we want to do? I first want to use this keyword at echo. I'm going to turn that off. I want to turn off a few of the things that are going to show up here in my um, command prompt window when it launches. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to use echo and just add in a little bit of junk here. File start. This is going to make it just easier to locate what on earth is going on. Excellent. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do start. So I want to start a particular program. Now I'm going to take advantage of a handy little shortcut, program files. This is going to be a shortcut or a keyword shortcut to where the program files directory lives in Windows. And then I need to point to the actual application that I want to use here. I'm going to make sure this is in quotes just in case we've got any spaces. Now, I could see, uh, let's go ahead and open up a new one of these, right? If I want to track this down, I could go to my PC and my C drive in, not 86, excuse me, regular old program files. And then in program files, I can see here there's a folder called derivative, a folder called touch designer 99, a folder called bin. And sure enough, if we keep scrolling down here, we will locate a Touch Designer 099 exe. This is the application, the executable we got to point to. Okay, so we know we got the program files. Then we've got derivative, 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 great. And then we've got Touch Designer 099, and then in bin, and then we want Touch Designer. 099.exe. Okay, so I want to run that application, and the file I want to run with that application is going to be that auto start to file, right? So that's auto start.to. Now, this is a problem right here because where does this thing actually live? Well, we could put an absolute path to this particular file, that's one way to solve this problem. The other thing we could do is we could take advantage of another little handy uh, shortcut here, percentage sign, little curly doodad, dp0, and then we're going to add a slash to this. And this is going to say, look at the directory where this script is being run from. So we actually want this script to help define where this application starts. Now, before we do this, I'm actually going to add a timeout. And let's do t slash 1. I want it to wait one second. So this should show up. We'll wait a second, and then we'll launch this thing. And then I'm also just going to, for my own uh, sanity, I'm going to add another timeout. Let's say 10 seconds here at the end. That's going to make sure that my command prompt stays up and doesn't just disappear as soon as uh, we've actually executed these commands. OK, so let's save that. I'm going to close Touch Designer here. And then I'm going to head back over to my folder. And let's try giving that a run. Oh no, what happened? Where did everything go? We should have seen Touch Designer start up here. Oh, there it is. Excellent, excellent. Aha. Magical. Now let's just check one thing here. I think we actually messed this up. It should be slash t. That was my typo. There we go. That'll make sure that when we run this, let's do that one more time, we should see that window hang out just a little bit longer. Boom, bada bing. Great, so file start, that's that echo. There is our first uh, timeout. Here's our second timeout. We launched Touch Designer, right? We launched this tow file right after this first timeout. And so we could even put something here like echo starting Touch Designer. And that would show up here in our uh, command prompt as well. Now, that's all well and good. Okay, great, wonderful. I've got a way I can use a batch script to actually fire up touch. But, you know, what can I actually uh, better use to take advantage of this? Well, it just so happens that we can take advantage of environment variables uh, to actually capture those goobers here right inside of touch. 
So let's go ahead and set up an expression for that first. Here, uh, inside, we're going to go to our text portion. We're going to turn on an expression. And I want to grab the var. And in this case, I'm going to use a var called startup. So that's what I want to grab. Now, I think the way this works, ooh, no, I was wrong, excuse me. So startup there is going to go ahead and just look for this variable startup um, that lives here inside of touch. Now, there are a number of environment variables, or excuse me, a number of variables that are accessible to us. If we look at our variables and macros window, right, our built-ins, we can use our little eval that to actually grab some of these. So something like per touch build or desktop or uh, gadget inside, right? We can grab all of these things with a little var call. And inside of our quotes, we just have to use this keyword. So cook rate, for example, right? Cook rate here, 60 points to 60. So what's this environment variable's goodness? Well, there's uh, we can actually grab an environment variable that we set at start to get a hold of that. So I'm going to save this project one more time. We're going to come back here to our little batch script. And let's actually take a look at something else that we might be able to do here. So let's set startup to be controller. So we're going to actually make sure that we create a variable, environment variable called startup. Controller is going to be the string that's associated with it. It's important that there are no spaces here. That'll uh, get sideways on us if we're not careful. I want to go ahead and echo, uh, right, I want to print out starting touch designer with, and then I'm going to take advantage of these little percentage signs to go ahead and grab that variable that I just defined. Okay, so starting touch designer with, I should see controller. And let's save that. Let's give it a run and see what we get. Right, starting touch center with controller. Okay, well, so far so good. That showed up the way that we wanted to here in this command prompt. When touch designer launches, hopefully, fingers crossed, we should see that variable, ah, bada bing, bada boom, show up just where we wanted it to be. Now, why do I want this? Why do I care? Well, let's imagine that you are, you know, you've gotten to an advanced stage of how you're thinking about working with touch. You've got a, an approach where you use one toe file, and then depending on the configuration, it starts up either as a controller or as a renderer. Or maybe you've got um, a, a way to handle a communication inter, uh, interchange. There's something that holds on to um, all of your OSC vars or your MIDI maps or you name it. Right? You want to be able to launch multiple instances of touch to not only break up some of that processing, uh, processing pieces, but also to leverage the fact that you can work in a single toe file a little bit more flexibly in a way that gives you some access to think about how you configure things from file rather than how you have to make multiple toe files. So let's go back to our batch scripts and play with that just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy all this good stuff we just wrote. I'm going to dump it in here a second time, and this time I'm going to add node. Now I'm going to do another echo that's just an empty line, and then another echo. To make sure that I've got a little bit of oops, space here, great, because I want to have a nice little line break. Oh, get rid of some of this. Ah. There we go. Boom. All right. So what I should see now is I should see one or one instance of touch start up with uh, this particular variable, controller. I should see another one start up with something called node. So let's go back to our bash script and give it a run. OK. So far, so good. You can see here that touch center is starting up with controller. Touch center is starting up with node. All right, groovy. I'm actually just going to go and get rid of this for posterity. All right, while we're waiting for touch to fire up here, 
Looks like we've got one instance. Oh, watch out. That's node. And we've got another instance that started up as controller. OK. So sure enough, that worked just like we might want it to. Now, this would be especially important, valuable, interesting, useful if you're working with multiple GPUs. Because working with multiple GPUs, uh, the way, especially if you're working with Quadro cards, to bind a particular touch process to a particular Quadro card uh, happens from this particular kind of approach, usually with a uh, command script, a batch script, as it were, to be able to issue those instructions. So if you're running from a batch script, uh, right, you're going to run multiple instances of your project. We can't use a te the technique we've used previously with an external JSON file to be able to grab a configuration schema. Instead, we need to use something like environment variables to actually dig down and grab a hold of that. Now, this is pretty slick, but this is just how you do it on Windows. 